Facebook, YouTube, Forum Friends, what's going on? Bobby C back here with another custom gun quick look. Today we are looking at my Bunker Arms, now known as Bunker Machine Works, BA0007-1911. And I wanted to take a moment and show this off because this firearm in particular is certainly one of the most meaningful to me. I'm super prideful when it comes to this one. And it's a, it's a firearm that I, I honestly, I love this gun. Um, as some of you may have seen in the past, there is a Wilson Contemporary Classic video posted and this firearm was built based off of the initial spotting or sighting of that gun and that gun not being available to me. So when I called Brandon to build me a 1911, um, that Wilson gun had a lot of influence on how this one was actually commissioned and spec to be built. So as you can see, this has quite a bit of wear on it at this point in time, but it's got a lovely patina. Um, I, I really do love the, the wear points and the, the look of this. And this is undoubtedly the firearm that's been handled most by me and, and probably shot second most right behind my Chambers Custom Regulator. So with that said, let's take a look at what this one's all about, what's going on with her, and I can kind of talk through a lot of the features that this has and why I chose them. So first and foremost, um, this has a oil grained classic old school bluing on it. It's much more silvery than dark blue. And I'm not sure exactly how Brandon is able to accomplish that or get that look, but this one certainly has it. And it's, it's certainly a gorgeous finish in its own right. It is very, very, very cool. Um, and I gotta be honest, I don't know if I prefer the finish that this one has or the finish like a, a, a traditional salt blue. Um, and as this patinas and wears more, um, obviously we'll, we'll see, but let's kind of start up front. We have a bull nose, so Brandon went ahead and angled that, that front end. You can see it really at the bottom a lot, a lot more than, than anywhere else. We have a coned barrel with reverse plug with a with a crown on this barrel. High power cuts, ball cuts going to the frame. We can see quite a bit of wear on this right side, or the, I should say the left-hand side of this gun. Um, we have all nighter blue small parts. And at the time, there weren't a ton of, at least trigger parts even, to be able to do all nighter blue small parts, but Brandon figured out a way to do it and figured out a way to make it happen. So he uh, he went ahead and did that. So we have all nighter blue small parts. Up on the slide, we have a pretty deep chamfer running around along the bottom of this slide, which I asked specifically for, deeper chamfer than normal. And then a French border running across the entire top of the slide with Brandon Bunker's logo on the back. We have a little bit oversized thumb safety um, because when I shoot, I like to rest my thumb up here and this just serves as a really nice ledge. Can't remember who makes this some thumb safety off the top of my head. I wanna say maybe both of those parts are, are Harrison parts, if I'm not mistaken, um, because at the time of this build, which was 2013, um, Brandon wasn't yet making all his parts in-house. So he we, we went ahead and picked out a bunch of parts that um, just made sense with the build. Down to the frame, we have an all steel trigger, and then we have 15 lines per inch 
almost pyramid-like front strap checkering. Guys, even though that looks super sharp and aggressive, it may just feel the best of any front strap checkering and rear strap checkering that I have. I really, really love this. It does not move, it does not bite. It's much more gentle than like a Springfield Armory 20 lines per inch, but at the same time, it, it gives you that aggressiveness. It looks very cool. And uh, yeah, I love that. Timed grip screws, these grips are from Cherokee Hills. I think they just go with this particular 1911 better than really any of the other ones um, in terms of grips, grip panels that, I, that I've had in my stable on this particular 1911. So these are now here to stay on 007. We can look at some of the detail work. So we can kind of see those bevels on the sharp edges or, or points, I should say, of the of this 1911 and I, I love that very nicely blended from scratch front sight oversized gold bead we have a round top with serration arrow serrations or, or arrow pattern going down the top of the slide cart national match barrel and then we can go to the other side so what do we have on this side same same deal as I pointed out on the on the opposite side of the frame. Um, we have an amazingly damn near perfect blended grip safety. We have a spur hammer. That mainspring housing that also has the 15 lines per inch checkering. And then that lanyard loop with some small niter blue parts. So let's talk a little bit about why I decided to go the route I went with this particular 1911. What kind of inspired it? How did I decide what I wanted done to it? And really guys, it was, hey, same as the Wilson Contemporary Classic. If, if Browning had access to modern day parts and was able to build a 1911, what would that look like? So this, I didn't want to make an, an exact copy of the Wilson Contemporary Classic, but I wanted something similar because at the time I did not have that firearm and I just fell in love with it when I initially saw it. So this is what I commissioned out. It should be, in terms of theme, an old meets new and kind of best of both worlds. So has a Marvel disconnector cut underneath the hood here. It's got a hand fitted cart national match barrel. The build approach to this gun, at least from Brandon, was quite different than what he's doing today. And this was still when he was getting large oversized parts and then hand fitting down to the thousandth. Whereas now he's building all his parts to a very, very specific tolerance on a CNC machine and maintaining the CNC machine so they can hold tolerance and then doing a lighter, a much lighter uh, need for, for hand blending and hand fitting, which, which is fine. I like both. And I think there's room in the custom gun world for, for all that. Um, we can even see down to the level of detail where if you look just above the, the magazine release, you can see that bunker arms logo. And that was almost to mimic the Colt cartouche that a lot of those World War One, you know, 19, whatever it was, guns had and those inspection marks and inspector marks. And this, this has little markings all over it that I'm not going to really get into, but that just have little special details and meaning to, to me, the, the buyer. As you see, like I said, those, those niter blue parts and a lot of that niter bluing is now wearing off and turning either a purple or um, almost like a, a plum slash red color. And it just looks cool. The more that this gets shot and gets used, the more, the more character it has and, and the more special it becomes to me. So this, this firearm is, like I said, it's the first full custom gun that I ever bought. And it's the first full custom gun on Brandon's own variants, which was the, bun the Bunker Arms Custom Ellington, Florida. It was the first gun that was commissioned on his variant. So he, he built plenty of 
custom guns prior to this one. He had already been known in the small group or the small niche group that we're all in. Um, but I told Brandon, hey, before I have you build me a gun, which you will do, um, I want you to have your own variant. So as soon as he secured that, I picked serial number seven for various reasons, um, biblical meaning and all kind of other stuff like that. It has, just has a special meaning for me. And this was the very first commission build from Bunker Arms. And I'm happy to say I also have the earliest serial number that was ever released, which was 0003. So I have 0003, 0007, and then I have, I think two or three other ones floating around that I'll do some quick looks at. So with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I did not mention that I also have a switch barrel cart national match 38 super barrel for this that, um, you know, I can, I can flip flop a handful of springs, the barrel, and we're ready to roll within, you know, two minutes. So nine mil 38 super switch barrel, first custom gun I ever got lanyard loop beveled out, you know, integral magwell. 15 lines per inch, Niter Blue small parts, ball cuts, high power cuts, bull nose, cone barrel, awesome blending all the way across the board. Um, you know, fixed 10.8 rear sight. Um, I love this gun, can't say enough about it. Blending on it is, it is it's as good as it gets. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed the story behind it. Hope you guys enjoyed seeing, you know, an eight, nine thousand dollar gun that really gets used and shot quite a bit um, because, you know, everyone has safe queens. But how many people actually take their guns that they've spent a boatload of money on and and run them, you know, run them and 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 use them the way they were they were essentially meant to be used. So anyways, it's a little longer video today, guys, but I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you guys come back and, and check out the next one and I'll catch you guys soon. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.